What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Writer's Realm Podcast, and thanks for joining us on this epic adventure we call writing. We're your hosts, Bob Adato. Austin Matthews. And Holly is traveling right now. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about writing fight scenes with Jeff Nelson. How are you doing, Jeff? Uh, I'm good, and you? I'm great. Uh, tell us about yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you can insert the Channing... Um, um, Tatum and uh, meme in here, but you know, I'm Jeff, or yeah, <laughs> I always say that because to get out of the way. Ever since that movie came out, I just always hear that line. I'm just like, I, I mean, at this point, like, I think it's funny. Like, thank God that movie um, didn't come out um, when I was in middle school, I would have been even more uh, uh, miserable, but yeah, you know, but you know, now I was just like, whatever, but yeah, um. I am an author. I've been writing my whole life. Um, as you can probably tell, I grew up with a speech impediment. So uh, it's better now, but it still it still um, flares up from time to time. And But it was much worse when I was a kid. And uh, writing was kind of the only way I could really communicate hmm. much when I was a kid. So hmm. I've been writing my whole life. And, um, you know, I, you know, I started reading young, too. But, like, <clears throat> um, I was that kid who everybody thought was, like, a bad reader because I didn't want to read, like, Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. Which like you know was just a book where it's like two hundred and forty pages of some girl on an island alone. And I'm just like, this is so uninteresting. Why are they making this? Like this? <laughs> so, but like you know, um, but you know, like you know, I would read my own books. I'm on the side. You know, I started mm -hmm. reading. Um, I think I first read Homer at like, I was pretty young when I first read um, like in a like an abridged version of the Odyssey. And I loved mm -hmm. it. And I read the Iliad. It, it wasn't like the modern, like, I didn't read the full Iliad when I was nine. Right. Like, I did yeah. not. <laughs> but, I mean, I did not. But, like, you know, I read, like, a a bit of a um, watered-down version of it. Yeah, and, I remember um, being a kid, we had the great illustrated classics, where it was just yeah, like, you know, like, it's a page and then a picture, and it's great. Yeah, and I loved it. It was like, mm -hmm. I, I was like, man, this is, like, you've got, like, you know, like, some, like, I was too young to really know what I was reading at the time, but I was like, there's like tragedy and like stakes and like all this Ooh. real deep ex um, existential stuff about war and like, you know, and like it's, it's, and it was, um, and like, you know, the, and like, and like the gods envious of the uh, uh, mortal humans. I'm just like, mm. why are we reading this stuff? This stuff's so much better. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, like this stuff's so much cooler. I, so, yeah. um, so that's kind of why, um, so yeah, I mean, I started getting, but like, and I didn't really know the kind of thing I was reading at the time, but as I was progressing more and more, you know, I started to get into like um, Joseph Campbell and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm a big um, Star Wars fan. And actually when I was in college, I was in a film class. Like it was like a film appreciation class. Mm -hmm. I was a history major and I read, um, I was a, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, I wanted to do a film course and I did like a screenwriting course or something like that, or some, or some kind of course like that. And I had an assignment where I had to write a 30 page essay on a movie of my choice. It could be on, it could be on any topic. And I went to my professor and I was like, I'm going to write an essay on why the star Wars prequels are amazing movies. And I'm going to, um, uh, get an A. And uh -huh. he was like, and he was like, okay, Jar Jar. And I was like, and I was like, all right. All right, okay. let's go. So uh, I passed the essay in. That was a Friday. That Monday, I passed the essay in. And, you know, I didn't hear from him for like, you know, we didn't get it back for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. But two weeks um, passes, and I'm in class. And my, and my, and my, and my professor's like, everyone leave but Jeff. And I'm just like, I was like, I didn't think. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I didn't think I wrote anything offensive in that like i hope not like i wasn't trying to be <laughs> jerk or anything i'm just very passionate about my opinions and uh <laughs> he looks up at me and goes holy shit i looked down at it and it said a and i was like nice now yeah, i will so say the, the you know prequel trilogy is my favorite three like trilogy oh, of the star Wars. they're movies. amazing so like i mean it's a hot topic but yeah for sure yeah. but like I mean, I mean, we could get into this more, but like, because I love uh, once you read Joseph Campbell, like mm -hmm. you understand what George was doing there, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, you know, the, he was what he was actually going for was something far deeper than just uh, than 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 just like someone saying than someone saying like uh, 
than than someone saying like than than someone um uh, complaining about sand or something like that, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and like, the thing it. is, like the original trilogy is so much like okay, like it's very simple, it's very on the surface, it's very like lasers and swords, cool, it's great, yeah. it's fun. But like the prequel yeah. trilogy, I feel like actually gets a lot more into the politics and like mm -hmm. the religious well, side of things and all right. this stuff, and I I find that more fascinating and, as I get older. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's just so weird because I remember like um. Like, I remember, like, so the prequels came out on my, so the Phantom Menace came out on my 10th birthday. I was born May 19th, uh, 1989, and the Phantom Menace came out May 19th, uh, 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 99, so it was on my 10th birthday. And, like, I remember I was so just, like, wowed by that. Like I was, because I was ten, so I thought Jar Jar was funny. I was like, I think this guy's yeah. funny. Like he's making like poop jokes, yeah. and like that's what I, he was there uh, for, right? Yeah, I was like, so like you know, I get if you're older, you're gonna like be like this thing. This guy is just kind of stupid, but like as a kid, you're like, oh, this is this guy's funny because I think poop jokes are funny because yeah. I'm a dude and I was ten and I was really immature, so mm -hmm. just I thought poop jokes were funny. And <laughs> just well, I the did. Fan theory of Darth Jar Jar is just you know. Uh, I was trying so, to my soul. <laughs> so I believe that to a degree. I believe that it to a degree. A like, yeah. listen, like when you and I'll tell you why I believe that because I remember like George is very. I feel like is very in tune with like psychology and the way, uh, especially the way kids think. Because yeah. and the reason why I say that. It's because I believe in when he was making Return of the Jedi, um, he was speaking to a child psychologist and um, during his writing of that movie. And and when he was speaking to that child psychologist, she said, you need to put a scene where Yoda confirms to Luke or or somebody confirms to Luke that Vader is, in fact, his father, mm. because most kids are going to think that it was a lie. So mm -hmm. you need to mm -hmm. so 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 if you truly want to seal that yes Vader is without a doubt Luke's father, you need to have somebody confirm that to Luke. Mm -hmm. So and that's why George put that scene with Yoda where he says, yeah. oh, "Father, he is." You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, but um, now I'd well, love to talk about Star Wars all sorry. night. However, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, you're good. and that's that's okay, Jeff, because what you don't know is that we. Uh, go off on tangents all the time. Okay. Okay. However, <laughs> we do need to make Corrales back into. <laughs> yeah. I what is, no, it's it's. I love it because you're hey, very passionate about about this, and uh, I mean, it's fantastic. Somebody agrees with me about the first story, <laughs> the prequel oh, yeah. trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will uh, defend you all day long. Right. So yeah. Don't worry. All right. Well, so Jeff, are you? Scenes. Do you have any? Uh, book scene or i'm sorry books do you have any books out or a writing book or what's so, yeah. what's that look like right now i getting my first book published um i published a comic book about 10 years ago uh spoiler it sucked uh i don't uh, like it it's just not good i mean what was your first Sunday one Go it's called practice yeah, man it's called it's, practice. yeah it's called sons of yellowstone and uh okay. the idea is cool but the ex but like i'm gonna be honest i didn't know what like what like subsequent drafts were when i was 21 or 22 mm -hmm. or 23 yeah. so i was like oh you can like rewrite this no it's done now <laughs> so yeah that's uh so you know not the best process right i admit that um but uh it's on amazon and if you want to think i'm a bad writer you can go uh, buy that. <laughs> but, um, but um but um but yeah um i have my first full novel coming out it's being published through a um, hybrid um, um, publisher. I'm going through the, the crowdfunding for that as we speak. I'm currently just over $7,000. I mean, no, I'm almost at um, $7,000. Nice. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, and I got hit 10 by the 18th. So, nice. you know, this is uh, if someone ever told me I was going to make almost $7,000 in two weeks at some point off something I wrote, I'd be like, <laughs> That's what? A, well, how can, yeah. uh, what's the title of the book? So or it's uh, called, tentatively titled. It's called, um it's called um uh, ninja punks uh fr nice. the F, the, yeah and, it, and is um, it on is it on kickstarter or how can we find well how about so, yeah, how can I, we find you yeah if, if so um the actual um so so um i am on instagram at thought and mind um writing and uh i have a link to the um uh, campaign at that i just okay. just the link Perfect. for okay. just um just the link for the actual um, 
um, campaign, I'd have to close the app, open Instagram, and be like, okay, that's a W and a D. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's 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 one of those ones. So right, like, right, it's just, okay. it's, yeah. Nice. Yeah, easiest so, just to go through Instagram. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to go through Instagram. <laughs> Wow. But okay. Yeah. And what uh, genre is that? Is this book? It sounds so exciting. So yeah, um, I've always liked. Um, I grew up, you know, as the first generation of I think American kids who really got exposed to um, anime because mm-hmm. I was nine, ten, eleven. I mean, you know, I was at that right age at a very exciting um, point in pop culture where um, Japanese uh, anime was coming over to the mm-hmm. West for the first time, <clears throat> um, and I. And I would argue that uh, it, it was that that killed the American uh, um, Saturday morning cartoon. Like when Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z came to the um, um, came to America, no one wanted to watch um, Scooby Doo anymore. Because let's face it, um, Dragon Ball Z is cooler. <laughs> well, yeah, like, just, as a fan of both, I will stand. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like. Listen, like, I mean, you know, I mean, sorry. I, to any to any Scooby Doo fans, I apologize. <laughs> I mean, I. I meant no offense. No, um, I know. It's a, you're talking about yeah. action, though. You're talking about well, fast, so I, hardcore action, right? As a yeah. quick two-second defense, I will say Scooby-Doo can wrap up a story in 20 minutes, whereas yeah. it oh, takes exactly. 200 listen. episodes for Dragon Ball to wrap anything up. <laughs> I, oh, dude, 100%. <laughs> like, dude, listen. If I make something half as, like, one-third as um, su- successful as um, Scooby-Doo, I'll be happy. So I'm not hating. Yes. I'm just saying that I think Dragon no, Ball No, for is sure. <laughs> Very different. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Right but yeah, okay. um, so what's it about? So, what's your book about? So um, it's it's the surface level plot is uh, there is a kid who is kind of based off somewhat based off of me. His name is um, his name is uh, Brian Stratton, and he's like a sixteen year old punk kid. Um, his mother has just had just uh, 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 passed away. That is not based off me. Uh, um, Okay. Uh, my mother, I love her. She's alive and well. So that part's not based off me. That's just an extra bit I added. <laughs> oh, but um, but yeah, um, he's like a he's like one of um, he's a he's a punk kid who skips school and doesn't do his homework. And his favorite band from Japan is coming to America to play for the first time. Okay. Now, um, and when he goes to the show. Um, he wants to sneak backstage after it's done so we can meet them because I know a lot of punk kids who tried to do that back in the day mm-hmm. and uh, or you know they attempted it and, it and it was unsuccessful but you know because but um, cause, you know I would you know I just like I, I, I used to go to um, big shows a lot as a kid and I would just hear that in um, kind of uh, in the line I'm like do you want to get arrested you know <laughs> but you know I would just that you know that was just so i was like oh that's something that a punk kid might do so uh and when he opens the door and goes into their room um the, he finds that they were all that they've all been um killed um by a ninja so that's the kind of catalyzing action of the whole of the, of the whole story so is this um i don't know like urban fantasy or is it just kind of so um, i don't know yeah so it's like i'm calling it like uh, mythic. It's like part mythical because you have mm. the Shinto gods in there too. Um, nice. So yeah, it's kind of like modern crime fantasy. I don't know. It's kind of like yeah. its own. Like like you know, I think in this new age of like indie um um creators, you're gonna start seeing genre lines smashed because um right. because the only people who really care about genres, I feel like, are traditional uh um publishers. That's right. And traditional publishers yeah. wouldn't want to talk to me if I wrote the next. I, I mean, yeah. I, 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 right. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I, I mean, at this point, I could have the next, you know, big hit in my, you know, you know, um, right. you know, and they would not um, want to talk to me because no one knows who I am. So yeah. yeah, no, I feel now I know what you're saying because they they're biz- they're businesses, okay? So they need yeah. to make marketable material to sell. Right. Yeah. They, they want to make so they have to. Unfortunately, they have to. Fit themselves into boxes whereas mm-hmm. yeah. indies you and i and every you know all the other indie mm-hmm. authors here austin yeah. is also an indie author we get to mm-hmm. kind of yeah. ride blaze our own trails yeah, yeah and we get, we get little to, rich and that's all that matters and like yeah, yeah that and then like you said we get to kind of mash them together you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. um different elements and mm-hmm. and it's hard when somebody says well what's your i'm like well i guess it's steampunk you know my yeah box. i mean <laughs> But only yeah. because it fits within that theme, Victorian era theme. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like steampunk; it's fun. But I don't necessarily—I'm not necessarily, 
you know, I don't dress like that every day all the time, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So, all right. Well, I just, I just went through your, uh, Instagram and you've got some, this is very curious because I just picked fight scenes. I didn't know that. I mean, I just saw you like you're doing some jujitsu or you're doing, yeah. you're rolling around on a mat with somebody, some poor, some poor guy. Uh, you're <laughs> uh, that might be my roommate. So okay. yeah, Clark, uh, that might so, be my roommate. <laughs> well, well, what a trip. I mean, here, I just, I swear, I just totally picked, well, we haven't written, we haven't done anything about fight scenes yet. So I just picked yeah. the topic. Yeah. And uh, so, so you want to go over that real briefly, what you're doing yeah. with uh so yeah, too, so I, is. so yeah, I am a black belt in in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've traveled all over the world to train. I've competed a bunch. Um, you know, I mean, when when folks ask how um, good I am, like you know, I'm good. You know, am I Leandro Lowe or Boucher Show or sorry, these names mean absolutely. <laughs> I know, to you. I know, but, you know, Gracie, and that's about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, I actually, I've been in the same um, room as Hoist. You know, wow. I know a few Gracies. Yeah, wow. I know a few Gracies. Um, um, I speak, I speak, um, sorry, I speak um, Portuguese. And uh, yeah, so oh, nice. I speak some Portuguese. But yeah, um, so yeah, like I met a few Gracies. I know a bunch of pro fighters. I train with um, um, pro fighters. I used to train in a room in New York City, and I'm not joking. Um, mm -hmm. For the pro trainings, they would, in the middle of New York City, in July, they would shut the windows and turn the fans off. <laughs> Miserable. Boy, it was a, they like the smell, I, or what is this? <laughs> uh, to be the any kind of yeah. – well, the unfortunate thing about it is to be any kind of competitor in jiu-jitsu, you have to establish some kind of, like, crazy will in you that you will just mm -hmm. fight through something that miserable yeah, like that yeah. and that's just really like what it comes down to i mean you know i was also kind of crazy so <laughs> yeah. going that. right well let me ask you like how have you brought like all that experience into your writing and into the story well, so, so that's so yeah that's a really uh that's a really um good question because um i teach now you know i don't train super hard anymore mm -hmm. uh, at least at, at, at least uh, for now but um I teach now at a few different gyms and um, I really work on like it's a very verbal art teaching and how you phrase mm -hmm. things is very important like you know so really like um, I would try to like when I was working on uh, ninja punks and you know um, you know I mean there's some stuff in um, in jiu-jitsu that you don't do it that that you didn't that you don't do in the fight scenes and uh in the book like you know you don't sword fight in jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. you don't strike in jiu-jitsu which is all grappling mm -hmm. um but you know um you know some of the big throws some of that stuff you know i used to teach in class and i would talk through mm -hmm. um i would try to teach um verbally how i would want that scene uh written mm -hmm. and so, because basically my thought process was, if I can verbally uh, um, cue someone how to do this move well, then that means that can translate into text and someone uh, uh, reading it would likewise understand what I was saying. Yeah, that, that's a really good way to think about like writing a, yeah. a fight scene. It's like, it's an instruction manual. And like, I used to be mm -hmm. a, an English teacher and one of the assignments we uh, had as part of our curriculum was to write a step-by-step -step instruction to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And so inevitably somebody would like be like, oh, hey, put peanut butter on the side of the bread. And so I yeah. put it on the, we would actually get all the ingredients and do it for them. And I'd put it on the crust because they said the side yeah. of the bread, but that's very ambiguous and you can take it different ways. And so getting into that, mm -hmm. like, well, how detailed do you need to be in a fight scene for, you know, a reader from a different background to understand what you are saying to them? Yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, no, um, I definitely, I, I definitely, um, agree with that. And actually, there's this new revolution in jiu-jitsu because really, in jiu-jitsu, like everyone thinks we're all uh, meatheads. Every jiu-jitsu guy is just kind of like, is just kind of like a bit offbeat. Like we're all kind of a bit weird. Um, every like every one of us. Like I could tell you, like I could tell you some, um, some of the characters I've met in my life through 
through um, through jitsu and you'd be like, this person does not actually exist. I'm like, I guarantee you this person exists. I, uh, I talk to them every day. Yeah, there's a couple of guys that uh, do BJJ at work. And yeah, they're, yeah. they're some of the more interesting guys. Yeah, so uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. So I mean, to want to do that, you've got to be just a bit weird. But um, but no, I mean, but there's this um, rep, there's this current there's this current trend in jiu jitsu called the ecological approach, and this the guy who's pioneering it is this guy, I'm Greg um, Souders. I um, he's a um, uh, um, he's a very smart guy, and he's all about like that kind of um, verbal um, um, cueing and stuff like that. So you know that's kind of where I can. So I I use some of his um, verbiage uh, when I do fight scenes too. So you know if you want to try to write good fight scenes, I would actually watch Greg uh, um, Souders, G R E G S O U D E R S, um, okay. um, teach uh, um, jiu jitsu, and and the and the way he verbalizes things is pretty um, well. First off, it's very um, um eloquent. Mm -hmm. uh, but also you can just you like you just know what he wants you to do based off what he's saying okay yeah okay. you know yeah. um speaking of you know fighting and experience uh i was a police officer for oh wow 20, 24 years and then a bailiff for another like four and a half so i've got like 30 yeah. years but they okay. trained us in some light jujitsu as more control yeah. holds because, mm -hmm. you know, some strikes, some, you know, knee strikes, elbow strikes. So it's so kind of like a mix of Muay Thai and, and uh, yeah, absolutely. anyways, when I wrote, when I was writing my first fight scenes, I wrote them out very, like, I knew what I was doing, right? In other words, mm -hmm. I have, I know exactly what this looks like. And so I would mm -hmm. explain it in great detail. However, everyone said they either skipped that, it was boring, <laughs> or they were, and I was like, what? How is a fight scene boring? But, um, <laughs> well, but I was doing well, it wrong. Uh, so I don't know. Is there anything yeah. that you've learned while writing out fight scenes? Yeah. So I would say, and it kind of goes in line with what I tell my students too. Like I tell my students, don't think about the end point, which is to say, like I have a group of kids that I'm um, um, coaching right now and I'm not going to show them submissions for at least a year because mm -hmm. the, because the psychological issue with showing someone submissions is that if you show someone a submission, they will kind of see it in the distance and they'll jump for it and they'll do something stupid and they'll get swept mm. and submitted themselves. Mm. So, um, so I am just showing them positions be, um, because that's really the most important part of jiu-jitsu. It's the foundation of it. And it also gives someone a more attainable goal to focus on, which is to say that with writing, don't focus on the actual endpoint of a movement. Focus on the movement itself because movement is largely the driving force of, of fight scenes. Like, 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 and I always use this as an example, like, for example, why is the fight scene in, um, uh, what's that movie called? The stoner movie. Uh, the stoner movie. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Pineapple <laughs> Express. Oh, yeah. Pineapple yes. Express. Mm. Why oh, yeah. is that fight scene hilarious? <laughs> but the duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan on Mustafar, like, a Beethoven symphony. Oh, like, yeah. why? Like, Absolutely. well, because... Well, because the first example, they're fumbling around very clumsily and trying to fight through their own um, fight through fight at each other through their own incompetence to a degree, mm -hmm. and and um, and and in, and in the second, they're masterfully um, um, moving um, gridlocked, um, trying to legitimately um, kill each other. Right. And that's um, and they and they move very um, fluidly and it's very athletic and that's why one is viewed a certain way and one is viewed um, the other way. So yeah, I think what so I think a big reason why a, lo a lot of fight scenes are viewed as boring is because they just focus on the end point of the of the of the actual movement and not the movement itself. Mm -hmm. So if they say like, "Oh, Steve punched Phil," you'd be like, "Okay." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like they're not focusing on what's important. Like at every yeah. given moment, whether you know you're sitting down for dinner in a in a scene or you're fighting, like you need to be focusing yeah. on what's important. And if you're like, you know, Steve punches Phil or whatever, like yeah. it's very clinical. Like the more clinical you make it, yeah, maybe it's more accurate, but yeah. Yeah. you're ignoring what's important about that fight. Yeah. Like there's so because much on the that, line. Exactly. Because that's really what 
I think makes fighting so appealing. Like even jiu-jitsu, if you watch two high-level jiu-jitsu guys go at it, it's mm -hmm. it's like it's like it's like these two guys who were in the Matrix. It's like yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> like no, it, dude. It, it, no, and for like, sure. It, and once you feel that, and like, dude, because I've been in that in that flow state when I train, when I've competed, and it's like it's almost like an out of body experience, which is what I think everyone finds so addicting about it. Which is you know because. Um, that's what I found. So, um, yeah. So kind of like, you know, um, why I kept um, wanting to do it. It was literally, I'm an addiction. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, but like, it's, but like, and, but because it was the movement, like just the way they move, it's like masterful and, um, yeah. try, um, so yeah, I mean, like, um, so what I also try to do is like watch a jitsu match, like on mm -hmm. slow motion and try to, uh, and try to write the movements out. Like mm, that's, that's a good practice yeah. and like an exercise. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Um, and one thing that we're not uh, we're talking about the physical aspect, the movements mm -hmm. yeah. and the strikes, and yeah. But we're also not talking about what's and also I feel needs to be a balance. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the what's going on in the character's head or whoever's yeah. fighting? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. what they're feeling, what they're experiencing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Well, and they're like, also like stuff. they're poking and prodding each other. Like I remember the first MMA fight I ever saw. It was the two guys were kind of just dancing. No, no punches were thrown for like the first yeah. 15, 20 seconds. And then one punch was thrown. Other guy was knocked out whole match over. And I was, oh, yeah. it's, you know, engaging because you're like, you can see them just like really calculating what the other person is mm. doing. And so exactly. getting into that, that mental space in That'd your writing of like, yeah. oh, here's the weakness. Oh, he's covering here. Oh, yeah. I see that he knows this martial arts because, right. you know, it's MMA and like, oh, he's going to use this one to cover this. And like yeah. really getting into like, oh, it's uh, almost like the the Prince of the Bride where they're meeting and he's like, oh, well, I know that you spent some time in Australia and yeah. Australia is all <laughs> criminals. And like just yeah. getting into that mental aspect of the chess match yeah. of it as well. Mm. No, absolutely. Um, and yeah, to uh, Bob's point, um, when he uh, when he was talking about kind of like that deep third uh, POV mm -hmm. um, aspect to it, I definitely I definitely um, agree because fighting hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, which is honestly why like um, a big part why uh, like I can't watch like you know uh, movies where like it's kind of like those like kung fu movies where like a guy just like flicks someone and then they go flying backwards. I'm like, <laughs> well, if that was possible, I wish I could do it because uh, <laughs> like, 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 yeah. and like, because, and also like it kind of like, it kind of like depreciates the, um, in a, in a degree to a degree, it depreciates the technical value of actual martial mm -hmm. arts. Cause it's, mm -hmm. it is very, uh, it, it's way more well, when you want, once you understand how it actually works, it's far more um, in depth than that. Mm, so yeah. yeah, but um, but um, uh, um, but also it hurts, <laughs> and like I there's was... times where you could make an adjustment or a movement, and all and all of a sudden your knee pops, oh, and mm. you have, and if you're fighting someone, you have to hope it unlocks or else you lose. Like there's like there's times where I've been fighting. And like mid match, and my knees locked, and I'm like, I want mm -hmm. to win this match, so I'm just gonna pray this gets unlocked and just fight with um, one leg and just hope my knee unlocks so I can fight. God, and, you, you, yeah, mm, you just reminded me of one of the most horrible things I ever saw. It was an MMA fight, and the dude went to kick the other one, hit his shin against the other one, and you could see yeah. the like bend around. Oh, like it yeah, broke. Yeah. Oh. It's, uh, Silva oh, versus you. Weidman. Oh, or um, it happened to Weidman too. It happened to um, Connor um, uh, McGregor too. But yeah, yeah um, just... but yeah, <laughs> you're um... like that's not supposed to happen. Well, and like, no. but like that leads to an interesting moment because you can see it in the fight where he's like he does that, but he doesn't really. It doesn't register. Like it's a lot of pain, but he doesn't no. register. It's broken. And he no. goes to step back on it and just whoop, falls over. And so yeah, like, I mean honestly. Goes... Um, mm -hmm. So this is a so to deal so to address pain during fight scenes, I can say from experience. If something breaks, like breaks, you don't feel it. Mm. So, like, which is that's probably a good um, tip for people, like, because the endorphins kick in and you just don't feel it. And all you know is you can't move it. It's, I mean, you're still screaming because, like, some you broke something, but mm -hmm. you, but, but you're you're screaming more from like you know what happened, not because you're actually in pain. Like you're like you are in pain later, yeah. but 
at the moment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so like if you, so like when I read things like, oh, like this really hurt when, or, or like, you know, he could, um, um, feel the pain, um, when he was stabbed, like I've never been stabbed, but thankfully, but, um, but I've had some pretty severe, um, breaks. I've, I popped my elbow a bunch. Um, I had to have my toe, um, reattached. That's, a, mm. that's definitely a story. Um, <laughs> and uh yeah it was my big toe yeah that was very painful um well it was not well it so it was not painful sorry that was it was a lot of things <laughs> um, um i so i was rolling and there was a seam in the mat and my toe got jammed in it and i fell over and my toe went and honestly that didn't hurt i was like at the time i was like oh, i just thought like i just thought like i jammed my toe a little bit Mm -hmm. I pulled my toe out and I saw it was dangling off my foot and I was like, oh, and that's when I freaked out. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I mean, when you freaked out. Okay. Like, so, I mean, I, I sliced my foot completely open in like, yeah, yeah. maybe like 13 like, stitches or something, but like, I didn't feel it. I was like, trying to keep this like, free I mean, to PG exactly. guys. This I know. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry but, I apologize. Like, to, to your point, like, whenever you're looking at writing a fight scene, like, there are a lot of different kinds of pain and they signal from different kinds of injuries. Yeah. So, like, that's something like, to keep in mind too. It's like do yeah, your research and be like, oh, well, like he got stabbed in the side. Like, if it's yeah. a sharp knife, like it might be a clean thing where it cuts the nerves, and they might not actually feel other than like the pressure. Yeah. So like, what? So what? So what? I like to tell people is like, it's like I usually say like if something is like severely broken or if you are injured to the point where it could be fatal, I usually say it feels kind. Of, I mean, I've never been injured like that, but you know, mm. I've had some severe injuries, obviously. Um, and it's almost like it the feeling was almost like hauntingly empty like mm. you like mm. well i mean i don't like using um uh, i don't like using um um uh, i don't like using um adverbs very much but you know that's kind of like the only way i can really sure um yeah show it because like you know something's bad happened right. and you can't move that part of your body and you just but you just yeah you just because like pain's a warning yeah. and once and once and you know, and once it's it, and once it breaks, it's like, well, tried to warn you. <laughs> <laughs> Warning is too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You missed it. Yeah, yeah. How about You're so that, far across the line? I, it's a dot to you. Yeah, I think that's a great uh, segue. I kind of had this idea of of what it would be like. We're writing one of our characters, or they're getting into a fight and they're losing. Yeah. Like, what do we do with that? That site. Well, for both sides, for the psychology of losing what are we trying to do and and also we could talk about winning too what that feels yeah. like the endorphin rush um, absolutely but yeah what does losing feel like if we're gonna uh, a character? it feels terrible <laughs> now we all know Lo what losing feels like hopefully because <laughs> i've yeah, read I mean, I've losing, run races but like in a, in but a, like you know, the very last place of, but... the feeling of <laughs> you just knowing that that other guy is better than you hmm. Hmm. It's just not fun. You're yeah, like, yeah. is there a point and, in your mind where you just go, okay, you know what? He's better. He's he's uh, virtuoso at this. I'm just gonna go ahead and just like, like give up. Do we uh, just no, give up I or mean, yield or so like you always try to just because here's the fun part about fighting is that like, and this goes to from anything from a brawl on the street, which I which again I've never um, been in, but you know it goes from you know that to sport fighting to pro fighting mm -hmm. anything can happen like you know you could right. be getting your sure. butt kicked and you could throw a kick back or throw a punch back and if it mm -hmm. lands clean at the right spot that guy could just go out yeah. like that sure um okay so we never um, give up then well i no. will say okay well, if you're writing a scene, yeah, exactly. It depends <laughs> on your character. It also depends on the circumstances because, you know, living yeah. to fight another day is a thing. But yeah. some characters That's are it. not going to do that. They're going to be like, no, yeah. I am right. going to stick this out. Even if I yeah. know I'm going to lose, I'm going to, you know, right. lay my life down for this. Absolutely. But it's no, a, a lot about knowing your character. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, but yeah, no, I definitely I, I'm agree with that, which is why I uh, backtrack to uh, – to, um, correct my answer. I apologize, but uh, <laughs> no, no, no. We, but, uh, we definitely allow that here. Backtracking is that's we're all thank experts. you. I appreciate we're that. All experts. <laughs> awesome, but um, but yeah. So that's what I would say. Um, I would also try to say like compare movements to like animals or objects. Um, because like um, 
Like, I think I write somewhere in Ninja Punks at the end, like I say, Hatori moves with the fluidity of a masterly stroked um, paintbrush. And when he and when he left hanging aloft for a moment, he pl he plunged his um, Tachi in um, he plunged his Tachi in um, into the guard's back, um, splattering a crimson, and that kind of and that kind of gives a very mm -hmm. um, like you know how he was moving, you know, okay. yeah. yeah, and it, yeah. and and it kind of has a a kind of lingering uh, metaphor to it. Mm -hmm. the whole way through you know yeah it's so, kind of sticks yeah. in your mind right exactly yeah. it brings in that level of artistry to it where it's not like it's just this brutal fighting it's like it is this masterfully controlled thing it makes me think yeah. of uh jet lee's hero where it's like a whole yeah. thing of the calligraphy awesome and all yeah so it's awesome. a little bit of that whole like outlandish thing but it is so beautiful with the metaphors and everything yeah it's, it's exactly hits home and there is like and and there is definitely a point where once you do a lot of this um this kind of stuff like you see guys like you know who who are fighters like look at like uh anderson silva like write how he fights if you can write how how that guy fought you will write the most epic fight scene ever because that guy was literally doing kung fu movie stuff in real life mm -hmm. like okay. um but yeah that's so great that's advice kind of, gonna, yeah so yeah no i th I, I like that um I think that's a part I missed. I feel like since I since I figured myself not to be an expert in fighting, but I knew what I was doing, and I thought, well, I'll just write it exactly how that is. But yeah, but what you're saying is, I feel like that's very very helpful for new writers is to go go find this guy, uh, Mark Silva, or or a fight scene uh, in the uh, movie. I'm Anderson Silva. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, and then uh, yeah. but yeah, just kind of study and what they're doing and how they're mm -hmm. moving, right? Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because be again, good. it's because again, it's the movement. Like, yeah. that's, I mean, that's really what you're learning to do when you fight is to move. Because most people, when you learn how to do this stuff, you'll find that most people don't know, don't know how to move, um, don't know how to move with the, with the maximum level of, of, with a maximum level of efficiency, mm -hmm. which that's really all what technique is. Like, like, a lot of people have a very false misconception as to what technique is. Technique is not some magic trick that if you that if you do every movement right, like you're in a video game and you <laughs> and, and you mash all the um, all the uh, um, buttons right, it's going to work on everybody. Like, I don't know. I feel like if I hit up, up, down, left, B, I will do a Hadouken. I'm <laughs> But no, but like, but like, I have so many students who were like, "Oh, I was, I was doing all the steps right. Like, how come, how come that pass didn't work or that sweep didn't work?" I'm like, "Because that guy is a world champion black belt and <laughs> you're a blue belt. Like, there's a bit of a skill discrepancy, yeah. and like, so, and, and that's the thing where we have to where we have to tell people like, you aren't doing anything wrong. That guy's better than you." Mm -hmm. yeah, so he's just doing it uh, more right than you are <laughs> exactly exactly no that's absolutely correct mm -hmm. um so what so so which is the pivot he's 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 moving more efficiently mm -hmm. and that's what technique is it's yeah. just a it's it's a different term for it's just a shorthand term for using your body's attributes strength speed whatever to their maximum level of efficiency that's yeah. all that's all technique is Perfect. to spin off of your whole thing on uh, efficiency. Something else that really will make your fight scenes more engaging too is your efficiency of words. Like if you're yes, describing absolutely. every little thing that happens, I'm checking out. But if you're like hitting yeah. the main points, hitting the main movements, the big absolutely. strokes, and then it's only well, getting into the details where they're like really important. And it's really funny you say that because uh, my editor, who I was, who edited um, Ninja Punks, he. <laughs> Like I don't like being told my writing is good because I always get paranoid when someone says that. I'm like, wait, you said it was good? Like, dude, like I know I'm six four, I'm two hundred and seventy pounds, and, and and I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but like I'm not gonna hurt you. You can tell me that my writing sucks. Like, are you Batman six you. four two seventy all muscle? Oh, wow. Yeah, like yeah, it's like. <laughs> I mean, it's like, dude, like, don't worry. Like, I'm a softie. Like, yeah. I collect action figures. I'm not, <laughs> like, like, it's cool, man. Like, yeah. so, uh, so, um, so he wrote on one of his notes. He's like, 
um, he's like, I think he um, he was he was British. So he said something, some kind of like British curse. And he was like, you don't need to duct tape my you don't need to duct tape my eyes open and 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 and, and force me to look at every last detail only mm. show the important stuff. I'm like, mm. OK, <laughs> like, there was like a whole half page where I was just talking yeah. about how this guy was uh, how, how this guy was. Um, what um was um how this guy's arm was moving over the course of one punch and he was like oh my god i hate this <laughs> <laughs> well so like i i had there a whole thing go. where like i have characters that like i am fascinated by boxing chess so i was like i'm gonna have a boxing yeah. chess scene in one of my books well you know what both of those have very similar things in what makes them boring because yeah. if i'm describing every little move that you're doing in the chess match or the boxing match it's yeah. going to be miserable. And so you have to yes. figure out what can I cut out of this mm. to really yeah. get to the juicy bits. Mm. Absolutely. No, I mean, and that's kind of like, you know, and that's kind of like the burden of fiction almost to a degree mm -hmm. is that like, you know, um, you have to, you have to tell something that's truth through lies. Cause that's basically mm. what fiction is. It's just, you're telling the truth through a series of lies. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, that, that, yeah. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just kind of, you it's know. It's a story, like, yeah. yeah. That's a story, yeah. well, story I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. maybe thinking about it like this way, like, it's, as a metaphor, like, think about it like an impressionist painting. Like, yeah. it's not a picture of, you know, a sunrise or, like, you know, think of Starry Night. Like, it's not actually a picture of a night sky over a city. Yeah. It's a bunch of really fat brush strokes. They don't mm -hmm. even cover the entire canvas. There's, like, raw nope. canvas underneath. But you get the point, and it's beautiful, yeah. and you move on, and it's great. Exactly. Exactly. But, um... And you've only got to do, but you've got to make it believable that it's what you're trying to tell someone mm -hmm. that it is, even though it's not. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, um, and actually it's kind of funny. Um, I used to be a journalist and I used to write for a website um, and I actually previewed Assassin's Creed for uh, Black Flag. Mm -hmm. um, and I was talking to the lead um, developer on it and I was, um, I was uh, demoing it. And he said, kind of like, the problem is that um, when doing these ship fights, they were actually like hours and hours longer because they were trying to like find positions and get like that. But like, if you did a five hour ship fight, you'd be like, come on, I just want to fire my cannons off. Dude. Yeah. Come on, please. Yeah, that's the thing is like, you can make it believable or you can make it way more entertaining. And like, exactly. I mean, that's kind of the, the state of modern media it, is that we're and that's through. kind of the balance you have to strike though, is that mm -hmm. like, like, are you like are you invested in this story enough? Are you invested in these characters? Because because that's really what it is. It's the characters that are going to drive the believability of a fight scene. Like, right. dude, like the WWE looks looks um, looks fake. I mean, but, well, well, sorry, not fake, but it looks scripted. Like you know, yeah. the fighters, the wrestlers are going into moves yeah. because it's just obvious if you know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. right. But the reason why people like WWE is because the characters like, yeah. like oh, yeah. you like seeing the rock and you like seeing uh, um, Cody Rhodes and their stories yeah. and, 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 and all stuff like yeah. that's why you watch it. And so it is like, still you physically impressive too. Like they're still doing some crazy stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I mean, you know, um, you know, but still like, you it's know, every yeah. wrestler knows who's going to win the fight by, by right. the end, you know? So, yeah. But yeah. So like, but so, which is to say, the only way to the only way to uh, keep the viewers engaged is the characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great point. I mean, the characters and, and why why are they fighting? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking of Lee Childs, Jack Reacher, who's he's absolutely yep. going to be fighting through his book. But there's a reason why. You know, he's usually trying to get stopped or or whatever, um, mm -hmm. not by police, but well, sometimes by police. I'm just saying he's. The obstacle, as it were, as a plot device, is going to mm -hmm. be a couple of thugs coming in to stop him from yep. doing whatever. So there's going to be so. Yeah. But it, as long as it's, as long as we're seeing the character move forward in the story, yep. it's not just some random Absolutely. thing. And um, and right. And also, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, sorry. no, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Um, I would also to say like try to describe like how someone's muscles feel mm -hmm. when they fight because mm -hmm. that is because that's a big cue. Well, how do they feel? How we you're don't gonna, know. We have no well, idea. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> but, like, but like, but like, 
it, describing how someone like like for instance, I've gone to some some matches deathly afraid, mm. and yeah. my muscles just feel so heavy, mm. and I'm just like, oh my god, like mm. I they feel light and heavy at the same time, where like you know I don't feel any weight on my legs, but I also can't lift them. So it's, it's this mm-hmm. weird sensation. Um, which is to say, I was ang- I was anxious and nervous and right. I was scared, and that's I mean, why yeah, I was. Get that? in other areas of life too like so you can bring in that same level of anxiety and just think about like how put yourself in those shoes even if like you know i've never stepped into a ring like that yeah also they also you can add in the factor of adrenaline dump where your anxiety goes 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 and then all of a sudden you're fighting Mm -hmm. and then it's just adrenaline trying to mask your anxiety like i've had that before Mm -hmm. adrenaline dump is scary because like it's you're tired but you're not Mm -hmm. tired like you have energy you it's like it's it's almost like your body tired where like your where, where, uh, where like your head has energy but your body doesn't mm. it's it's a super strange sensation <clears throat> um and that's something i you know like um because like for instance like you know there's there's times where like you know i read books or things like that where it's like someone's first fight and i'm like I, this doesn't seem like someone's first fight like <laughs> you know, like they seem pretty oh, emotionally mm-hmm. detached right um and that's, that's kind of something point. that yeah and well, that's either emotionally that, detached or really expert at fighting exactly yeah. which is kind of like i think honestly one of them one of the most masterfully illustrated ways of like first exposing someone who had no experience in violence to violence there is an anime called um, vinland saga and the main character thorfinn he starts out as this like he's first introduced as this very um uh, innocent kid whose father is a very strong Viking and he dreams of one day becoming a Viking too. And um, his father goes away on a, on, on this quest, but the kid comes with him. Like he, he sneaks on, he sneaks on board his father's ship and his father's pissed because he was sailing into an ambush where he knew he was going to die. So the kid sees his father die and and the Viking um, who kills his father says, so basically the kid says, I want to kill you. And um, the and basically the Viking lord who killed the kid's father lets him join his Viking crew. Um, on, and basically the uh, deal is the kid um, Thorfinn is going to basically be the guy's personal um, killer. And then one day he will get the chance to kill the guy himself. Mm-hmm. Sorry, if, if I do you get do you get what I said there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, um, totally, yeah. But, but there's this scene where just after his father dies, just after he joined his father's killer's clan, I don't know what they're called, but like their their troop, I don't know. But yeah, mm-hmm. they're a Viking troop. I don't yeah. know what you call it. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Um, but um, he's in the wild and he's attacked by a wolf, and he and he tries to be friendly with the wolf at first, but the wolf snarls at him. So he grabs like a rock and just stabs the wolf and keeps stabbing it it, until he kills it. And you can see he's rattled and he just drops to his knees and he cries. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, that's like that. Like, like you should not trivialize violence, which is why, which is Mm -hmm. like, because if you're not educated in violence and, and all of a sudden you become educated in violence, it's scary. It really is scary Mm -hmm. on, on, and that is to say which is why so many folks are are nervous to start jiu-jitsu because like you know jiu-jitsu isn't the same thing as like fighting in a trench but still like any level of like but um but still if you've never done any kind of uh um uh, physical combat you know um and and you and and you see guys on the mat trying to choke each other you're like that's really scary you know, mm-hmm. which yeah. is why, like me, like if I, like you know, I picture um, fighting in a foxhole, and I'm like, that's really scary. I wouldn't yeah. want to do that Absolutely. because I am not ex- because I'm not experienced on that level of violence. You know, yeah. I'm just there's, not. Yeah. There's no atheists in uh, foxholes, right? <laughs> that's what oh, that's, no. that's what the I mean, saying I'm, is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and I am not. No I mean, I mean, like I've never fought in a foxhole. I hope to never do. Right. So yeah. I, yeah. Never, I, <laughs> I hope I never do. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, yeah. I mean, I think 
I don't know. I think that brings us to, you know, kind of our, our don'ts section then probably. Yeah. So like thinking about like, what are some, you know, what is one nugget of advice for not things not to do in fights? Things not, don't do this. When you're running. Things don't not to do. This. So think of one, huh. one big, don't do this. And we'll each come up with one. Yeah. Um, huh. I'll go I can first. go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, go we first. both. Sorry. Let's see, y'all. So let's see if we. Right, if on, I, guys, okay. Sorry. No, 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 Jeff. Don't worry. About no, it. Hey, you're the expert. No. You, you know yeah, all the stuff in, to do. Yeah, we came in here uh, prepared-ish. <laughs> yeah. I have. I have to go with my own. <laughs> what I already said. So don't be technical. Don't be too technical with it. Yeah. Don't look mm. at like I was. I swear, uh, Jeff and Austin. I was like, okay, his feet were set in a fighting stance. You know, Absolutely. And his, yeah. and his hips were pulled back and he reared back his right fist and he curled it up. It was just so Absolutely. technical. It was so ridiculous. I agree with that. Um, I absolutely agree with so that. No, don't you're right. get too technical. Yeah. I, mean, I would say some, something I've seen that does that very well, though, is that they go through the book and they're talking about the different fighting forms as they're training. So oh, then whenever they get yeah. the fight scenes, then yeah. they can be like, oh, they went through this motion, and they right. didn't have to talk about what that looks like. Yeah, right. well, um, so that's actually, a good way to that, that makes sense. Yeah. So that leaves me with my don't, because um, a lot with, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, um, I know you're but good. like a lot with um, ninja punks, I want to try to debunk is like peep is like the layman's view of martial arts. Like right. there's not ten thousand styles of martial arts. There's really only right. two. There's striking and there's grappling. Nice. Those are the only two real martial arts. Okay. Like. Um, like a guy who like, like, you know, like for striking, you have like boxing and kickboxing and Muay Thai. And those are all subsets of that. And mm -hmm. in grappling, you have wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, sambo, uh, luta libre, you know, and all these sub, uh, uh categories. But like the only really, really different is the rule set. Like, mm -hmm. like there is a lot of overlap in techniques used and things like that. So like, I don't know, like it really is just the rule set. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And in, um, in a, uh, in a, a uh, lot of regards. So like, yeah, so I would say like, don't, so like, I just kind of cringe when I see like his expert style was, oh, you yeah, know, sure. was flawless against, I'm like, this guy's never been in a fight in his life. I'm like, well, I'm like this well, guy's never to consider been in a fight. Too, on, on that note, like, you know, if you're studying, like, Taekwondo or whatever, like, that's designed to fight against other people that are doing Taekwondo, not designed to fight against people. Like, that's the whole point of, you know, mixed martial arts yeah. is, like, let's, you know, Absolutely. throw these all in a ring and see what comes yeah. up. And you know what? I, I, Jiu-Jitsu is usually a part of the winning chemicals, so. No, I, I mean, less so now. I mean, I definitely think, that's like, fair. we're talking – if we're talking like uh, MMA, yeah. I mean, because folks always ask me, like, what is the most, Im like, if I want to fight MMA, what is the most important martial art I need to know? And I always say um, wrestling, like wrestling, like, oh, yeah. because just the rule set of wrestling, like mm -hmm. knowing how to shoot, sprawl, because that's really what it emphasizes so much. Um, uh, um, Jiu-Jitsu doesn't really uh, emphasize that so much, yeah. which is well, what, I mean like. Yeah. If you're talking about getting into like, because like I write, you know, epic fantasy. So if I'm talking about oh, I love it. fight, like, yeah, you can learn all these things, but like, they're not applying by any rules once you get out of there on a battlefield. Like, yeah. so you are you a Sanderson guy? Uh, uh, are you yeah, a Sanderson? I do, fan? I do enjoy, yeah, Sanderson yeah. for sure. I love so. Um, yeah. Honestly, like, I mean, if you don't agree with me, like, that's fine. But like, in my opinion, like, my top two um, fantasy books. Are like the three uh, Lord of the Rings books is are are all tied for one for like the greatest fantasy books ever, and then number two is like um, the Way of Kings. Like I thought the Way of Kings was beautiful. Yeah. Like so, like like yeah yeah. There there's like, a moment in one of Sanderson's books that just like chilled me to the core in a way that I could never describe. Well, and it's fantastic. But and I he really book, does write good fight scenes. Yeah, like Sanderson writes excellent fight scenes. Though, so. I'm sorry. So my favorite Tolkien Silmarillion, though, so I know I'm on the outs on that one. So, <laughs> well, that's whatever. You know, I mean, history, I like, like, <laughs> it's it's here's the thing. It's mythological as opposed to that's the know, thing. Like actually. everyone's like, oh, it's so boring. It's unreadable. Like it's not. You're kind of exaggerating. Like I like yeah. to read it. You know, like yeah. it's not like it's, it's also not like an anthology reading, essentially. Yeah, it has but to it's not like you're reading a textbook. You know. 
it's not like you're reading on a textbook, you know? Right. Right. I mean, whenever I was like 12, it felt like reading a textbook, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if yeah. you go into it uh, expecting The Hobbit, it's going to be very, very difficult. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. No, but I would say, yeah. So for the don'ts, I would say don't focus so much on like individual styles mm -hmm. so much. Like focus on how they're moving, how they are going off each other, how they're interacting and imply the styles mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. movements. If that makes sense. Like, you know, yeah. like, like, you know, don't say like, oh, this person's Taekwondo was too good and hit, and their kicks kept, you know, uh, them at bay. Like, say yeah. like, you know, he was using his superior length to throw kicks that kept his opponent on the outskirts of them or mm -hmm. something like, like, something right. like. Like, yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and it's kind of one of those things, point. like, you can talk about the training, but, like, you're not going to get through an entire sequence of motions that you've trained for, generally. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, this whole idea of, like, you know, plans are useless, but planning is essential. And so, like, the training mm -hmm. is essential, even if you're never going to get through, like, an entire, you know, sequence, like, Brandon, ah, Brandon Sanderson with his, like, going through the kados and stuff like that. Like, you're not oh, going to yeah. get through an entire one of those in a duel, but no. going through it is still essential because it teaches yeah. you all that fluidity and stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, um, there was actually a scene where uh, I think it was in Words of Radiance. No, no, no. It was in Oathbringer. I think it was in Oathbringer. I still haven't finished. Um, I still haven't finished um, Rhythms of War because, frankly, I'm scared to because uh, my <laughs> friend finished wait. it. <laughs> what? My friend finished it. I mean, I am kind of that person where I get so sidetracked. I get like halfway through one book. I go to another book. Like I'm that yeah. kind of person. I'm just so yeah, yeah, yeah. scatterbrained yeah. Yep. that yeah. like I, do that I all the time. yeah. So yeah. like I so like yeah. I get to finish um the fourth book, and frankly, I'm scared too because I have friends who finished it, and they're like, I'm scared to finish it. <laughs> and uh, I don't want you to tell me because I I do want to finish it, but. Uh, if um, I'm gonna be very sad probably after I finish it, and that's okay. I am oh. probably, but it's good. <laughs> so, Austin, um, what's yours? So mine is gonna be that uh, don't forget to put you know more on the line than the fight itself. Uh, yes, it really absolutely. like. Otherwise, it's like, what are we doing here? Like, what even if it's just like a fighting competition? Like, if it's a tournament, there's got to be more on the line than just the fight itself. Um, oh, absolutely. So just figure out what that is, and then see if you can bring that into it, and like. As they're going through it, as their, you know, muscles are, you know, at just the worst, all the pain and the, you know, just the whole intensity, bring it back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Absolutely. No, you're, no, um, you're absolutely right. Because, again, it's all about the stakes. Like, like the biggest thing you have to answer for everything, not just fight things, everything mm -hmm. you're writing is, why do you care? Like, why do I care? Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you can't make me care, then you can show me the coolest fight scene ever. And if I couldn't care less what happens to either character, then it doesn't matter how well you wrote it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. No, Man, like, this was a yeah. blast. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. Sorry, guys. I get very <laughs> yeah, no, we'll track. talk forever. No. Yeah, I'm just your basic, <laughs> I'm just like your basic jiu guy who, uh, um, that, <laughs> that likes to read a lot. So I just ping pong off different subjects and yeah, yeah it's, Hope you take offense to it. No, you you're know. perfect, man. You're perfect. Thanks, yeah. I love this. this is great talking about Star Wars fight scenes. Yeah. Uh, once again, the, the Silmarian, uh, you know. It's going to come up every time. It's every More single episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so um, thanks for, uh, thanks for um, um, getting me on. Yeah. Um, I saw your story and I was like, oh. I mean, I'll reach out to them. I don't think uh, I don't think they'll respond, but give it a shot. And I was like, oh, well, Thanks. they responded. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and what Jeff's talking about is on um, we're on Instagram at uh, yeah. the Rise Realm podcast. Um, but yeah, so Jeff, how can we find you again? So I am on Instagram. I have two pages on Instagram. I have a I have a jitsu page called Thought and Mind JJ, um, and I have a writing page called Thought and Mind um, Writing. <clears throat> um, the reason why it's called Thought in Mind is um, I am part um, Scandinavian, and I always wanted to, like, have my own gym. But, like, there's so many dumb names that are based off Vikings, like, oh, Asgard Jiu-Jitsu. I'm like, this sounds mm. so bro -y and stupid, and I just didn't <laughs> like it. So, so I started looking into some Norse uh, 
uh, mythology because I'm more of a I'm more of a um, Greek and Shinto mythology guy. I'm not really so much into Norse mythology, which is weird. Mm -hmm. But um, because I'm part um, I'm Scandinavian, mm -hmm. but um, I was I was reading about Odin and he has two ravens, uh, mm -hmm. Hugin and Munin, and Hugin and Munin is Thor's it, uh, Thor's Norse <laughs> for thought and mind. Oh, so I was like, oh, thought and go. mind, that's cool. So, so yeah, so so that's kind of like why it's, it's those two things. So yeah, that's perfect. Uh, uh um um give me a follow there yeah. um the my book uh ninja punks fuck off oh sorry no that's okay Square. that's the actual um, title dude that's your, there's yeah. no is, here, um, <laughs> is coming out Freedom in the fall if you like uh punk rock and ninjas if you like uh, <laughs> that if so you fun. like <laughs> if you like the hero's journey if you like japanese history if you like martial arts if you like the first 20 pages being written in like pseudo Homeric prose, uh, you're going to like this book. So, uh, awesome. so, you know, I, so, you know, um, it's currently going through its, uh, fundraising. It's almost at $7,000. I'm very excited. I never thought I'd be a, uh, uh, published author. Um, I've been, yeah, like I said, um, I've been, uh, uh, writing books uh, my whole life and this is the first time getting published. So I'm really That's excited. Nice. Yes, yeah, so exciting. So when it mm -hmm. is published, we'll have you back on. Absolutely. That's awesome. Stuff, I would love right? that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, well, thank you all so right. much, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, don't forget to write and, de write and describe to our channels at the link below so you don't miss any of the Writer's Realm content. We always love to hear from our listeners. So if you have a question or topic you want to dive, un us to dive into, please get in touch. <laughs> it was great having you, Jeff, and uh, I know we'll thank see you, you again. Uh, right. But until yes, then, will. guys. Have a great uh, writing time. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> take care. <laughs>